Welcome to another episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Malcolm Allen, the vice president for 1924 Music Group. He's been through a lot of things. I heard his story. I'm here to bring his story out there. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Same old stuff. Just trying to make it another day, you know? Yeah, man. Freedom, is, uh, freedom isn't free, they say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely I just, isn't. I just, try to, I just try to make it and, uh, you know, try to uh, give back. You know what I mean? Look out for people that deserve to be looked out and even for the people that don't. You know what I'm saying? I just do my righteousness. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So um, when did you start, like, getting in trouble? Was it was it early on? Like, how was it growing up? Uh, I probably started getting in trouble really, like probably about ninety one. Yeah, probably. I think I was arrested for my first time in ninety one, like a breaking and entering. You know, what I mean, a whole bunch of people were doing it, but it was like I was the one that got caught. So, but uh, about ninety one, I started going to jail. I guess getting arrested by ninety four. I like when OJ Simpson was doing his. Driving around in the car, I was locked up in Virginia at a residential treatment center doing an 18-month, like, little sting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, for stealing cars, I would steal cars back then. So, like, I would steal cars from Maryland and take them to Delaware to a chop shop. Yeah. Chop them up. Well, they chop them up, you know what I mean? And doing stuff like that. And then by, by like, I think the, like, 96 was probably, like, the last time I did any juvenile stuff because I went, I did, like, uh another year into a, a couple spots here in Maryland uh, uh, for juveniles, like an actual juvenile delinquent jail, you know what I'm saying? Like the boot camps and all that stuff. And yeah. then I came home. I had a little stretch where I wasn't getting in trouble, but I, I like I wasn't going to jail jail, but I was still getting arrested here and there. You know, when you're a juvenile, as long as your parents come pick you up, for the most part, you usually go home. Yeah. But, uh, so by 99, I really got into trouble. I got like a, a, I got raided, you know, distribution charge. And then I caught a firearm and I shot somebody. So I caught a, a attempted murder and uh, they gave me 20 years. So I went to Maryland State Correctional uh, <clears throat> System and uh, I did like six years and some change on it. And then I was paroled. And then uh, I came home for a short period of time, about two years or so, a little over two years, and caught a Fed case. And then they gave me 216 months, plus I was backing up another 120, what was it, 126 months or 28 months or something like that. And uh, uh, I did 12 and a half flat, gave it back from the uh, Fair Sentencing Act that uh, uh, Obama made it a new law in 2010. The crack law, they call it. And in yeah. 2018 or 17 or 18, Trump made it retroactive. So that that really pushed me out. But I always did my own appeals and stayed doing stuff. I gave back some time for myself in 2014 or 15. I gave back three years, but three years was like nothing. You know what I'm saying? And the feds yeah. do the whole sentence. You know what I mean? They give you very little good time. So, it, you know, it's... The little bit of good time they get, you get a shot. They take fifty-four good days or plus. So, you know, they don't they don't give you too much. Like when they gave me that, they gave everybody the five or seven extra days before I actually got released from prison. They turned around and took it right back from me, and and plus some. You know what I mean for a stupid phone shot for using somebody else's phone. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah, man. I had them take time away from me for um. God, what it was over, but they wouldn't give me the time that I spent in county jail. They wouldn't add that credit. I don't know why. I was like, I was in prison. What the fuck? I was locked up, like, and they wouldn't let make that time count. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, they, they, they definitely do what they want, especially in the feds. The feds is the worst system I've ever been in my life. People yeah. always say, "Oh, the feds, they're so great. They're so great." You want to punch and slap everybody that ever said it. If you was in the feds and you said it was great, you had to been at a prison camp with a hundred people there. You know what I'm saying? Doing outside detail yeah. or something like that, or some low because the low, yeah. the lows have mostly child molesters and sex offenders. The campers don't have have them so much because they're a public safety factor. I was at, I did, I went to a couple FCIs, but uh, most of the places I was at was penitentiaries, and then I, I was at the SMU program twice because the. The new one is like the new ADX slash SMU program, so which is Thompson, Illinois. 
and uh, I went home from there. But Maryland came and picked me up for that detainer from that 20-year-old probation case. So they made sure they came and picked me up and tried to give it to me. But they just really wanted the money, man. They, you know, they just, they wanted me to pay. Was that that was a state case, right? Yeah, for the for the probation violation. Yep. That I when I paroled out from the first time, I was yeah. on parole and probation. So I, you know, I never completed it because I caught the Fed case. But uh, you know, they they came all the way to pick me up, and then they wanted to charge me for them coming to pick me up, like you know, <laughs> have me pay. After of I had course. a lawyer and everything saying that I was going to just let me out, let me turn myself in. I got a lawyer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they're, nah, we want to bring you, make you pay. But I didn't have to pay them. It worked itself out. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's a waste of time, money for them. But who cares? Let them spend it, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, I mean, they're spending millions and millions of dollars on inmates every day. Every day. Every Especially day. the feds. They'll just fly you around, man. Like, for anything, you get in a little trouble. Like you get a phone shot or you get this, they want to ship you to another jail. All they're doing is shipping inmates to, from, you know, doing different jail stuff for no reason. Swap yeah. out, they call it the bad inmates, but all you're doing is getting another set. What's the difference? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're all the same. All the same, <laughs> man. They're all yeah. the same. But you're putting them on planes and buses and all day long, five days a week. Then people are moving people on planes and buses all day long. You know what I mean? Constantly. And then the feds, Oklahoma City is the hub. Like that's where the airport, the airport is at the jail, man. You get, you don't even get off the plane. You know what I mean? You pull right up to the prison from the airport. And so get now jail. what happens if, if, if say I'm in there, right? I got like, um, I'm getting transferred to a different prison. What happens if you got to take a piss on the plane? Oh, they let you take a pee. Like, okay, they do it usually. If it's a long flight, they do two. If it's just like, if you're going from like here to Texas or here to Oklahoma, you're going to get one one time. Once they get up in the air, they do a bathroom break. And they usually, if it's at nighttime or at lunchtime, they'll feed you a box lunch, you know, the little box stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they put you there. But, you know, you're chained up, belly chained and all that. Yeah. I can't pee on the plane. One time I held my piss for about 17 hours, man. 16, 17 hours. I'd say it took me an hour to get the piss out, standing there. Yeah, it's like, what? The? I can't believe that. Like, sometimes when I was in prison, they would make me stand there and not let me go to the bathroom, man. Yeah, they don't care, man. Yeah, see, I can't pee on a plane because they want to stand. They want to give you, you want, they, you got like 10 seconds. So you got to pee in 10 seconds. And then you got to, they're standing there watching you. And the plane, this, you know, the, the, the plane bathroom is only so big. You know what I mean? Man, I seen people that had to use, take a, you know, uh, uh, can you cuss on here? I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take a shit, right? So they don't got no toilet paper and they're not uncuffing you. You know what I'm saying? So they just had, they pulled the dude's pants down, let him take a shit. And then they just pulled his pants back up. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause, you know, what, how can you wipe yourself? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy, man. It is crazy. And if you like, act up, they bag you. You know where they say they'll gag and bag you? They will put that bag over you and put you in that back of the plane and and, and have you facing like, you know, the, the, the wall of the plane type. You know what I mean? I'm but sure they give you a couple of these, too, in your stomach, man, while you're handcuffed. You're definitely going to get those. I've seen yeah. them, man. Like at the last prison I was at, like they would actually, if me and you were sellies, but just they just wanted to be dicks or they didn't like us, we might be chilling. You might be on your bunk reading a book. I might be whatever, writing a letter. They might come by and look in and then the dude will be like, stop fighting, stop fighting. And you might be like, huh? And then they'll just hit the code. Then he'll just throw grenades in your cell. Spray have you cell. seen it? Have you seen that happen? It's happened to me. You know what I'm really? saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, what? so like, that's what I'm trying what? to say. I've seen it. It's happened to me. And like, Damn. I'm asthmatic. So like, I'm trying to like breathe. You know what I mean? Because they're shutting the slot. You know what I mean? And they're just, and then they're going to come in there and rough you up. Usually you can tell when it's just a rough up because they'll put you and your celly back together. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. separating you and your celly, then you know it wasn't no real issue. But nine times out of 10, man, they're just, it's like a training <laughs> camp for them. They just want to beat on you and see how their equipment works or something. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. I know, man. When they first got this shock to shield, in Hartford Corrections, I saw him using it all the time inside this uh inside a cell block. Yeah, they they use them in the feds too because when they when they don't have a lot of people, if they want to do like what they call a a quick like rundown, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, really, when they do a team on you, an extraction, 
they're supposed to go through a system, record it, and all that. Yeah, yeah. They might just get the lieutenant and a couple cops, grab that shield, spray you down, open the door, and go in there and wrestle with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, they spray you down so you're wet. And then when they hit you with that shield, the electricity, <laughs> oh, man. It's vicious, man. It's vicious. They, it's so crazy. Like, Lewisburg and, like, Thompson, Illinois were probably the worst for, like, the actually USP Canaan, which is in which is in uh, uh, in Pennsylvania, man, they got a whole. They call it I call it the shoe team for real because like they just literally walk down and look for anything, and it's like the worst sleeping. Like I didn't even have a mattress. They don't even give you mattresses, man. No mattress. What? One sheet, one underwear, one shirt, one pair of pants, one sock. We went three weeks without toilet paper, soap. They don't sell you nothing in commissary. They give you uh, two pieces of paper, one for me, one for you, and two envelopes. You might get one, like, to write a letter. You know what I'm saying? You pray wow. that your mail goes out. And the only thing you can buy on commissary is stamps if they let you buy it. You know what I mean? So, like, it's crazy, man. Like, that that was a torture prison. And you can buck. Like, the whole block can try to buck. But they will just go from cell to cell. And by the time you see a couple cells get, you know, fucked up, you're like, is this really worth it? Because at no. the end of the day, now you're going to be fucked up, sprayed up, all that shit. They're going to turn your water off. You know, they're not going to give you nothing. They will take all your shit and throw it in the mace and just give it back to you. So really, it's like it's going to be a worse searchable situation. You know what I'm saying? got to just sit and deal with it. And you just got to sit and deal pass. with it. Yep. No food. I've never felt starvation in my life till I was in federal prison, man, where literally like, like I told somebody, it's like one thing being out here, you're homeless or something, you know, you at least could go to a dumpster or try to find some food. Like, but when you're yeah. in a cell the size of your bathroom and they don't open the door or bring you any food and you have nothing, where are you getting it from? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there, man. There, there's no way to get it. You know what I mean? Those so, um those prison meals, those kept me alive for a long time. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't have no commissary. I didn't have it like that. So I, I could just sit at the dorm and eat or sit in my cell and eat all day. I didn't have it like that. Yeah. I was yeah, blessed. Man. So, you know, I, I stayed with commissary and things like that. Right. But even with that stuff, like after so long, I don't even eat that shit. I eat it more like when we're on lockdowns and things yeah. like, cause the feds stay on lockdown and like, especially in the penitentiaries and stuff. And like now with COVID, because I got released when COVID broke out. I was supposed to get out on March yeah. of last year. So yeah. I was supposed to get out. I just got to the new prison and they held me. But I knew I was getting released. And I definitely knew when my lawyer sent me the letter and said she had a status meeting with my judge. And the way I seen it was if he was going to deny me, he could have just denied it. He ain't got to go through status meetings and prolong my stuff. Just hit the button. You know what I mean? Hit yeah. The stamp the paper or whatever so mm -hmm. uh but i actually got out in may may 19th will be my one year home so this will be my first year home this week on wednesday so i'm almost one year home congratulations uh, man thank you thank you so you and, know um, custody of my one son since i've been home from texas i live with four of my kids and my girl uh you know we we live good we you know we try to do things together you know or take trips or whatever and you know, I'm getting ready to take all my kids on a road trip next month to Texas. And I'm dropping one kid off, and I'm bringing one kid back. You know what <laughs> I mean? She, they, he can stay with his grandparents for the summer for a couple of weeks or a month or something. And, you know, just just enjoy my life. You know what I mean? So are you on parole or anything like they that? Gave me, yeah, they gave me four years probation because the feds don't really have parole. I got four years probation, but my probation officer's cool. And like, you know, she's she told me, you know, if I just keep doing what I'm doing, I can give her two years and then I can get off, you know, be put in for a modification to get off. I don't good. see why I wouldn't because I do everything I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? She told so, um, me, she said I call her more. I, she said she talked to me more than any of her clients because I always got to call her for my job because I travel a lot. So I got to get yeah. permission to travel. So, you know, I, I just I talk to her, whatever I need to do. Boom, boom, boom. Keep it pushing. So um, when you were in prison, thinking about oh I'm gonna do this when I get out I got I got this and this plan, was it is it anything like you thought it was gonna be? I had a couple plans. 
because the reason why is because I didn't know where I was going to live. Like, I didn't know if I was going to be back in Baltimore, Maryland or mm. Houston, Texas. So it's like I had a plan for Houston and a plan for Baltimore. My friend who uh, blessed me with the job that I have, uh, you know, he told me about three years ago or so that when I come home, he got me. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I came home, he got me. But because I, I didn't I don't I ask nobody for nothing when I was in prison. I just do me. You know, what I mean, make my own way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so I just told him, I said, man, I come home, just got me. So, you know, I had a plan for what I would do then for here and a plan for there. And so pretty much what I thought it would be like for being here, mm -hmm. it was, you know, I, I didn't know how me and my kid's mother was going to be, if we were going to be together or not, because I didn't know if I was going to be staying her with her or where I was going to go. So, you know, it worked out. We got back together and we raising our kids together now. And, you know, we actually work with each other because we both work for like, I, she don't work for the record label, but we also have a clothing line, which is the brand mm -hmm. urban wear. So we have like color Bianca, which is what I'm wearing now. And then we yeah. have hello G line. So and we have multiple stores and an online store. And, uh, and so with that, you know, she, she is the COO of that company. So she pretty much runs that company and I run the record label. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and me and her partnered with my friend who already had everything going to where so we have our own line and stuff with that with the with the brand. And then yeah. we also started our own company together, which is called Freak Show uh uh Freak Show FX uh LLC, which is uh she is a uh she's kind of like famous uh for like uh FX makeup. Yeah. So, so we're we're working on doing a makeup line and things like that. So, you know, we got a lot of things going on, a lot of different projects. Yeah, man, definitely. I'll leave links below for all your stuff. Okay. Now, um, so you want to tell the people who you work for and what some of the things you've done? Uh, well, I worked for uh, 1924 Music Group LLC. I was the general manager. I am now the VP. Uh, we do all types of different things uh, in that aspect. I also, I am involved with the clothing line, which is the brand Urban Wear. And uh, so, I, and also it's uh, the website for 1924 Music Group is uh, 1924musicgroup.com. And then you got the brandclothingstore.com. But uh, so I run day-to-day -day operations. I oversee all financial things. I work with yeah. executives and local people on a local level, such as radio personalities, uh, artist management you know what i'm saying i deal with artists uh i've been getting a lot of people lately that i've been starting to manage personally through our label uh on a separate like they're not actually in our label but i we manage them as a whole you know what i'm saying yeah uh we've been doing celebrity videos lately like uh just recently we did a video for some people uh kpx uh uh, uh Beezus and jaron benton in Atlanta. So we shot their video. Then I just was helping my man named Black Goo, who's an artist, and uh, uh, Gago Visions with us is 1924 do, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Just Britney's video, which is, she's from Love and Hip Hop and all that stuff, uh, and Empire. So we just did her video the other day. Uh, you know, shout out to them because they brought us on board. You know what I mean? That was their project and brought us on board. So, yeah. you know, we, we've been doing some of those and then we shoot all types of other people you know we 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 do get uh distribution deals at times like you know it's just all about the artist pretty much you know what i mean so we've had late deals with def jam and things like that it's just all about it's all about networking man it's relationships and networking yeah yeah um so what what led you to go to prison what were the crimes that you committed to go to prison you said it was a drug offense for which time? The first time or the second? Uh, um, well, let's start with the first time. First time I was charged with first degree attempted murder and possession of a firearm. I was ultimately convicted for first degree assault, which is the same thing in Maryland, and possession of a regulated firearm. So I got 20 years for the assault and four years for the gun. And then when Damn. I went to the feds, I was charged with the uh, possession with the intent to distribute crack cocaine and ecstasy. So uh, I had no co-defendants, you know what I mean, on me or Kate. Well, the first time I somewhat had a co-defendant, but, you know, it's just he took his charge. I got mine, you know what I mean? But this yeah. time I had no co-defendants. Uh, 
you know, I think it was a weak case for real, but, you know, I went on the run for some time, so I was a wanted fugitive. For the second case? For the second case. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, when I knew they were going to have a, a warrant out for me, you know what I mean? So I was, I bounced. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, the first case, you want to explain what happened on the first case? Well, yeah, I mean, so I guess, uh, let's see, I, I was basically, I went to a party and uh, some people had some guns and they was making threats and then my friend had a gun. So I pulled his pistol out, pistol whipped the dude and shot the other one. So pretty much, you know, and then I only got caught because they caught my man. And then like, I wasn't going to let him take the rap because it was a serious situation. So I pretty much kind of turned myself in. Where in the body did you shoot the guy? In the face. So he did live. Yeah, he did live, but he had to have reconstructive surgery. So yes. I owed a bunch of money for restitution. That was the restitution money they wanted me to pay for me to. What kind of gun was it that you had? It, it was a. Uh, I want to say it was a Ruger P85 or something, or Smith. No, no, that was a different gun. Uh, Smith and Wesson. It was a cop gun actually. It was a stolen cop gun from Delaware. So you, and they charged you with all that shit when you got caught too. Yeah, they charged me and my friend both with the with the firearm. Uh, so we both actually got convicted for the firearm, but I actually got convicted for the shooting. Yeah. But technically, the wording was uh, with a blunt object. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But, you know, that for the enhancements. But they still talked about the shooting, so it didn't really matter. And they yeah. still know what's going on. It's not like the judge don't know the case. You know what I mean? And of I course. was in a small town in the eastern shore of Maryland. The boy's family was like county council or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So everybody knew his family. And Good thing he didn't die, man. You could still be in there. Yeah. Well, they offered me a, a 60 year, a 30 to 60. And then they went what? down to a 30 year cap. But I was like, I'm going to trial. So uh, they, the they didn't want to do it, huh? Well, the evidence was weak. But then I was in a small town in Maryland, which they would have fried me. They would have gave yeah. me a life sentence. So. I just took the cap for the 30 years and they yeah. gave me 24. So, you know what I mean? And it was my first conviction as an adult. Well, actually it was my second. Cause I had a, see, that was what it was. It was like, it was like a three strike thing kind of, but like I got, my, I got a first case at 18 for distribution of weed. Yeah. Like a pound of marijuana. I was selling weed. They raided the spot. That was some, it was some bullshit. But, so they bring up all your past stuff when all this yeah, stuff yeah. comes up. Especially yeah. the feds, because they careered me out in the feds. I got career criminal. Oh, man. So, so, like, you know, the three strikes, you're out. So I had the one conviction for the weed, and then they turned around and they charged, you know, they gave me the conviction for the, the, the firearm and the, the attempted murder. And then so when I caught the fed case, that was another drug charge. Two drugs, one violent makes you a career offender, or two oh, violent, man. one but if I would have had another charge and or if I would have had a firearm, they could have armed career criminal. It's 15 to life. I had 10 to life. What? So my guidelines actually started at like they, they say it's the guidelines 10 to life, which that's the minimum bottom number that you can get without cooperating is 10 years. You cannot go over the minimum mandatory. Really? Rating. Yep. And then the max in is life. So Sammy it, the bull, Sammy the bull changed that. He did five. Well, that's because he cooperated. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go under the guidelines. Oh, so yeah, if you, you cooperate. Go, if you yeah. Talking to somebody in the feds, and they got a minimum mandatory sentence of 10 years, and they got eight years, it's impossible. That means you're told automatically. Yeah. Like, you ain't even got to question it. Like, he told. He's hot. He been told on somebody. Yeah, so yeah. It, you can read it. The feds are in black and white, man. Everything they got is in black and white, and that's what it is. They don't give nobody. You're not, you're not going to get a suspended sentence in the feds. You're going to get a jail. You know what I'm saying? And they yeah. don't care how famous you are and how much money you got because they make the money. They don't care. You know what I mean? So yeah. you, know, you will go to jail. So, you know, and uh, they gave me uh, 216 months. So I What's going through your mind when they give you that much time? What's going through your mind? Uh, I looked at my lawyer and I was just like, what did he just say? <laughs> and he was like, just hold, just be, just hold tight. Just hold tight. I wanted to throw the chair and run up and punch the judge in the face. Because yeah. my family's in the courtroom and everybody's crying, you know what I'm saying? I got yeah. little, you know, I I had kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, my, that's my whole life. And then, I, my, you know, I asked the judge because he said, do I have anything to say? And I just said, man, you know, will you just make it to where I can see my family before they die? Because my parents are older. They had me in their 40s. So I'm 41. Yeah. 
almost here in September. So, you know, they're in their 80s. So I'm like, you know, don't, you know, but I still had seven years left of Fed sentence before I got released. So like, you know, anything could happen I still if I was still in prison, they're, they're older. So I just said, just don't give me a death sentence for my family. And he said, well, you said you're a young man, you'll still be okay. But he said, if you ever come back, he said, you'll never make it back out. So um, I ain't never going back. And uh, I'm glad I was able to be home. You know, there's people that's died since I've been in, friends and family. My sister's passed away, plenty of friends, plenty of uh, aunts and uncles and stuff, you know. Yeah, but, it's sad, man. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, I, there's people I never got to see, you know what I mean, you know, to talk to ever again, especially my sister, because it was weird because I was trying to get moved to a prison that was closer to her, and I never made it. I thought I was, and then, you know, I wanted to go see her when I come home, she let her meet my kids and things like that, but yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, she had to go and be with God, so... uh you know, I just, uh, I'm, I'm just, I feel I'm blessed to just have the people around me and, uh, and, and be in the position that I'm in because everybody doesn't walk out of prison and get a job position like me. You know, nah. I have a big home, I drive fancy foreign cars, you know what I'm saying? I live a good yeah. life. So, you know, I just was talking to a friend who just got released a couple of weeks ago, you know, and I just sent him some money on Cash App because he's like, yo, you know, I'm out here, I can't eat, I don't have, you know what I mean? I'm struggling, like, I don't know what to do, so... You know, I sent him some money. I'm like, you know, so he's like, everybody ain't got, ain't got friends in position like you. And I yeah. said, you're right. And I understand that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, you know, you don't know, you know, uh, uh, ev everybody's case is different. Everybody's different. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, I, I'm doing better than others, but I'm not doing as good as somebody else. Or, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is that me, as far as what I feel like is doing good is, is that, as long as you're taking care of the responsibilities that you have, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh, God, am I going to pay this bill or do I have enough money to eat or can I do this to where, you know, my kids are blessed, you know, to get and do everything they want. I call them little rich kids all the time. You know what I mean? They have everything. They do everything. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know, but, you know, I don't, you know, I tell them all the time. I, don't, I can't call my mommy and daddy, you know what I'm saying, to ask them to help me do something because they don't got it. You know, so you got, I tell them all the time, you got to make sure you stay in school, do good in school so you can figure out what you want to do in life. Because listen, I never had no plans on doing this, but this is a hustle. It's just like selling drugs. It's yeah. the same way. It's talking to people, networking. This business is built on relationships. You yeah. Know and so as you build relationships with people and things like that, that's how you make money. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're already making money, so they're bringing you into whatever they're doing or vice versa. I'm making money and I bring you into what I'm doing as long as it's doing something that we all can make money as far as in the music business. There's lots yeah. of ways to make money in the music business. It's just everybody can't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out if I would have never been in it. You know, when my I, I couldn't had... ever figure it out. I started doing this podcast thing, and now the music thing's coming all together, man. Yeah, and it is. That's how it is. Like I told my friend, he said, "Look, what do you want to do?" I said, "I don't know." He said, "Man, I'm gonna give you this position. You're gonna be my general manager." I said, man, "I don't know nothing about music, man." He just said, "Man, follow my brother around, and you'll pick it up." He said, "You're a businessman, you know what I'm saying, and you're a hustler." So. It's just like that. And it's the same. I say, like, I use the artists as my crack. Like, they're my crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The recording studio is my crack house, and I just sling it. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. I, I, do a lot of, I do a lot of this, man. I do a lot of this all day. So I, I talk so much on the phone. When I'm done talking for the day, I don't even want to talk on the phone no more. You know what yeah, I mean? my phone's constantly dead, man. I got to have it plugged in constantly. <laughs> Me too. Mine's plugged in right now. <laughs> yeah, man. The, uh, yeah, oh, that's, what, that's why I do this channel, to show people that are older and kids that they don't have to go to prison. They don't have to. They can get a trade. They could be a barber. They could be a podcaster. They could do anything they want to do. Yep. My philosophy is, is that what is it that you like to do? Whatever it is that you like to do, other people like it too. So now you have to figure out how you can monetize off of what you like. Because yeah. if you do things that you like and love, it's not a job. It's a lifestyle. I tell everybody all the time, my girl, whoever, this is not a job. This is a lifestyle. I live a lifestyle. 
You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I do what I just do regular stuff. Like I say today, okay, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go to the mall, I'm gonna hang out, I'm gonna call my friend, I'm gonna go see him, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna do this. But at the same time, I'm working because yeah. I'm on the phone orchestrating things like you would if you were selling drugs or any of that. You know, I'm like, I gotta yep. call my cameraman. Hey, I need you to be at this address. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, I need this money sent over here so we can buy this stuff for this camera. Or we got to pay this place for this spot. Or people are paying us for X, Y, Z. You know, so I'm just orchestrating things all day. But I can do it from anywhere. Like, my car is my office. That's why my, yeah. my, my stepmom always says something about my fancy car. I said, well, that fancy car is where I spend <laughs> time at. So I need it to be as comfortable as possible for me. What you kind know? of car are you driving? I drive a Mercedes. I, I I came home. I bought a Mercedes off the break. I bought three cars in less than a year, all financed. I don't. I don't. That's, I don't that's pretty that. good, man. You know what I mean? So you know, I got a I got a Ford SUV Edge. I had a 2014 Mercedes E350, and now I got a 2018 uh, uh, E300. So uh, you know, I was gonna buy the brand brand new one. I test drove it, but like I'm not gonna lie. You froze. For one car, you know, what you, I'm froze, saying? So, you froze real quick. Uh, so it's like you don't want to, you know, you give somebody 300, uh, 1300 a month for one car. That's crazy, know, bro. You know what I mean? You don't, I'm mad after I pay that. So, you know, I pay a little less than half of that for one car, but I, I pay a, over a thousand dollars for the car, all the cars that I got. You know they better saying? have, they better have a bathroom in that car and they better. You know, they don't have a bathroom, but I got a lot of black lights to come. Yeah. I got it's got neon lights in it and all that stuff. It's pretty oh, fancy. The uh, yeah. but you know, I you know, but like the thing is, is that it's comfortable, and that's where I spend all my time at. Like you know, yeah. like if in your case, if you were sitting where you are, doing what you were all day, or sitting like I'm sitting at this desk, I'm sitting in my car driving. Yeah. I drive two, three hundred miles a day in circles. I'm you know? gonna be taking this on the road. I'm gonna be traveling across the country on a train. And I'm going to be doing the podcast on the road. Oh man! Well, you definitely got to stop here in Baltimore, and not, and I'm and and let you know if we set it up ahead of time. I can probably let you. We can do it in my recording studio. You know, definitely. Maybe have yeah, some man. people down there. You know what I mean? Whatever. You know, it's definitely something that we can do. You know what I mean? It's that's a good idea, actually, man. Take it on. Yeah, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see where I can bring it. You know. See where I'm gonna go can. to go to California, and I got uh, the commission tours coming in July. Okay. in vegas so just getting ready for that that's um that's like dinners with uh mafia men okay. you can get you can pay for uh a night a night long dinners with them uh there's book signings there's going to be uh speaker engagements all kinds of things going on and that's in vegas yeah yeah i'd like i'd like to do that myself i'm going there in august but I, I wish I could go there in July too. Like, don't they have like? The I'm gonna have a commission tour in August too. July's already sold out. Okay. But I'm gonna have them all the time, man. That's what's up. I might be there in August. Don't they have that uh, mafia museum or something out there in Vegas? Yeah, they have the mob tours out there and the mafia uh, museum. Like I knew the people that I knew somewhat the people that was involved with the uh, Whitey Bulger killing. And like yeah. I was good friends with the dude Maddie from the town, so yeah, I know him. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, man. There's a there's a lot of people I know. I'm not, I'm not gonna name drop, but like there's a lot of people. If they could, you know, if they see me or whatever, they would they'd be like, like, especially guys from Boston and things like that. You know what I mean? I like how they always say my name. <laughs> <laughs> see yo, um, so when you got involved with an organization, was it in prison when you got involved with the organization or out in prison? In prison, in state prison. I didn't have to. It's just, you know, when all your friends are all part of something, you just kind of get with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, you get with whatever for whatever. But I ain't going to lie, man. It's like when I got into the organization, it was like more like I stayed in more trouble. Not because of me. Because yeah. about the people, it's a net. I, I'm not that dude that gets in trouble in prison, really. Like, as far as I don't get in a lot of fights, I don't get in a lot of problems. You know, anybody that's been in prison knows the three rules. You live by those three rules, you usually don't have problems. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, and, and I live by those rules for the most part, and I don't do anything, you know, I don't do no fuck shit. So, 
you know, but it's, you know, you, you have other people that you got to think for and they got to think for other people, but sometimes they don't think for other people. So, you know, another man's mistake causes another man to have a mistake. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when I was in prison, I was trying to um, stay clean and stay out of trouble. And, you know, you're going to drug classes, but you got to go back to the dorm where people are selling drugs and doing tattoos. So you're surrounded by that shit. Surrounded by it. It's all up to you, man, as a person. Every yeah. life is about your choices, you know? If you want to make poor choices and bad decisions or whatever you want to call it, like that's what it's going to be. I'm a strong believer and it's a fact because I do it and live it. If I don't want to do something, I won't do it. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. You can't peer pressure me. You yeah. know, I used to tell my mom all the time. My mom used to be like, bye, you know, the kids you're hanging out with. I tell my mom, I said, mom, I'm the kid that they need to stay away from. You know, <laughs> like, they're not. I'm the kid. <laughs> They're not yeah. doing, I'm doing I'm doing what I want to do, but I never took anybody with me that wasn't already doing the things that I was doing. You yeah. know, and like my kids, I'm blessed, you know, my oldest daughter, she's in college, just I think she's graduating this year and she's going to further her career to well, be a doctor. Congratulations. Make sure school. you tell her I said congratulations on that well, one. She's she's going to watch this, so uh she you know what I mean, so she'll hear it, so thank you. And uh, she's yeah. going to go to school in Miami. And because uh, she lives in out, you know, out this way in the East Coast, she doesn't live in Maryland, so I don't want to say where she lives, but yeah, uh, you know, but uh, she's gonna go to Miami to go to school eventually, I think, somewhere in Miami. But uh, and then my other oldest, you know, what I mean, she's uh, she doesn't go to college, but she's doing all right. Actually, she's getting ready to come live with me next month. That's where I'm swapping kids. And, <laughs> swapping know, kids. Yeah, swapping kids. The. Uh, so then, you know, so so far, everybody's doing good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my kids are not like, you know, they're kind of like this generation is kind of mouthy. And everybody, all they want to do is play video games. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they don't go outside and do stuff like we all did when we were younger. Uh, but, man, I was running in the woods with sticks, man. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got, my kids got dirt bikes and shit. You know, they do use them. Uh, my one son's actually recently had the police called on him for riding a dirt bike, and he wasn't even in nobody's yard. So, like, my opinion is, is mind your business. <clears throat> he's in your yard and he's doing something, then okay, say something, do whatever. But he's over there riding on the street. Mind your business, man. I don't People, live in the, That's live one in the thing, man. Area. People nowadays don't know how to mind their own business, man. You know? that, and that's it, why they have problems. It's a major problem out there. Like... Oh. I was filming a house yesterday, matter of fact. I was filming the old historic part of Bristol where I live. And uh, I'm I'm filming. Some lady comes out. Don't film me. I didn't give you permission to film my house. I said, well, there'll be a copy of this up on YouTube. If you want, you can go get it. And then her husband started coming out. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Let me get out of here before the problem starts, you know? It, 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 it's That's what it is, man. It's like people just don't, like you said, don't want to mind their business. They just want to, they always got something to say. You know, they always got this. But that's, you know what that's called? Miserable. People are yeah. miserable. So misery loves company. You know? Yeah. I always tell everybody, like, think about all the people that are broke, right? All yeah. the people that are broke are miserable. And what they always say is, I'm trying to get the money. I'm trying to get the bag. I'm trying to do this with the money. But that's why you're broke because you're trying to get some money. Money is like a tool. It's like a hammer. If you utilize it like that, it's there for you to use whenever you need it. You got to manifest that shit in. But don't think about the money. Think about what you're trying to do. Like how me and you had a conversation earlier, you know, talking about projects that we're trying to do, things we're trying to do. Those things bring money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So money will come. Just focus on the dream, focus on what you're trying to do, and just yeah. live your life. And then the things, the better things in life will come. If you're always complaining you're sick or you're always complaining you're this and always, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a whole lot of nothing and a whole lot of miserable nothing. I used to be that guy. I used to be that guy that would be like, I, uh, I don't know why all these other guys are making it and I'm not. It's because I wasn't putting in the work, man. He wasn't putting in the work. Yep. I say the same thing because I was never really that guy as far as like that, but I could see where I didn't further myself. You know, it's a fact that our brain matures at a certain age. 
I yeah. was about 32, 33 before my brain one day just clicked. And I could see stuff that I couldn't see before. And I couldn't think stuff. You know, I could think stuff that, then, that I couldn't think before. Yeah. And I literally could just be like, and then I was just like, what the fuck am I been doing to my life? Literally. I have same, wasted my same life. Same thing with me, man. I've only been doing this for 60 days. So I just started taking this serious about 60 days ago. And it looks like you're doing pretty good for 60 days, man. You know what yeah, saying? I had some bumps in the road, but I'm going to continue to keep going. Yeah, you know? that's what you do. You continue to keep going. Focus on the, the stuff you're trying to do. It's yep. not that hard, man. You know, uh, 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 I'll give a shout out to my to my friend 23 and 1 because, you know, he started. He was the same thing, the person doing all these things. You know, when he did my interview... You know, he just crossed over the 500,000 mark. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Subscribe. yeah. So, you know, so, you know, he's making a living off of this stuff. Like, this is yeah. his job. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't need another job. I don't know if he has one. Uh, yeah, he does. He, I think he said before he did. But at the end of the day, that's just because he wants to, you know, obviously to have more money and do other yeah, things. Yeah, he helps. He does his parent, his father's, Um, he has a thing where they make surfboards. Okay. That's like uh like, artwork yeah down like there, artwork down yeah there in your beach that's cool that's yeah. cool. so yeah so so that's like working for yourself then you know what i mean so basically yeah. he's doing all the things that he likes and loves to do you know yeah. what i'm saying so you know when you when you do the things that you like and love to do it's not a job and it doesn't even matter if you make more money because as long as you're making enough money to cover the things that you like to do in your lifestyle yeah then you are successful you know what I'm saying? That's what be, what successful is. Successful is being able to do the things that make your lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I live a lifestyle of more like uh, a rapper or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I do live that life. So, uh, but uh, that was the life I was kind of living before I ever went to prison. It's just I was doing it a different direction. So, but uh, yeah. I I have no complaints at all. You know, I could always make more money, but eventually I will. You know what I'm saying? The things that I've been doing lately, I've been trying to get into the club scene as far as like uh, not me personally promoting because I use promoters because we have promoters. Well, I have a promoter and I have a guy. I have a really good guy that um, he gets any club you want, man, throughout the country. Okay. He's okay. pretty good. That, that, that I might have to use them. I might have to use them because I'm definitely trying to expand. I'm already expanding in like out of state. You know what I mean? He, so he like, does the hard rock hotel and casinos. He does um all kinds of big name venues. He's from Minnesota. Okay. So I'll put you on with him. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Put because my girl, like I said, she is an FX makeup artist. I think it's mm -hmm. called Flyer Fly. They're getting ready to have soon here in September. I'll check it out. Yeah. I think it's in September. It's going to be in Delaware. You know, they. So what, what's the makeup artist uh, name? Uh, 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 Freak Show FX. Freak Show FX. Yep. So, like, if you went on my Instagram, you could see it. She's also a, a creator on the app Likey. She's also on TikTok. Uh, but she is a paid creator on Likey, so you know she does get paid to you know use it. She teaches yeah. makeup. Uh, you know, uh, she is. I mean, she's awesome. If you could just see some of the stuff that she does, man. Uh, she was gonna be on the show Skin Wars before they canceled it. Uh, yeah. They could call her not too long ago and say they might bring it back. So if they do bring it back, she will be a con contestant on the show. Uh, you know, if she if she has any. People with that have the makeup on and all that. Maybe I could have her on the show and uh, interview her. You definitely can if you want to set something up. That she definitely can because she she does do that. She teaches, you know, she teaches on there. She teaches class. She actually just taught at uh, Howard County Community College recently. Because that sounds really uh, interesting, man. Definitely, well, I'm up for it. I'm trying to see if I got something right here. This, this I'm like at her makeup desk. Look, ready? I'll show you something. You see this show, right? right? She made this out of nothing. What? Nothing. I think she said this was a sock or something. Yeah, she so made is that airbrush and all that? Holy airbrush, shit. like material that she made to like put it together. Yeah, man. She could take like some straws and like 
end up like making it look like some crazy mechanical stuff on your face. You know what I mean? Like, like that. So she's really uh, artistically inclined. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you know, she, she designed some of our clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, uh, right now they're trying to put something together for some for for Firefly for real. They're gonna design some stuff for there. Yeah. Uh, specifically for that event. You know what I mean? For our so clothes. um, I got a merch guy too, man. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I got a. We, we, you know, we we use manufacturers overseas. You know what I'm saying? So we do have manufacturers. We use this guy's right in Queens. He Queens. does embroidery. He does uh, silk screen. Any kind of uh, any kind of stuff you want done. Yeah. Well, we have all the machines. I have heat presses, silk screens. Yeah. We have one of our stores that we have uh, in Baltimore is like a. a I, it's more of our warehouse for that store because we have multiple stores. We have the store in North Carolina, which is in Raleigh. At the mall, I can't think of the mall right now. It's something Rally Mall or something. I've like been that. out to Baltimore before. I liked it out there, man. Baltimore's cool, man. It, you know, it's got the harbor. You know, it's the one harbor, yeah, that's what I remember. The harbor. I was just walking don't cut down too there. many corners. You know what I mean? You cut a wrong corner, you're in the wrong place. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you see them blue lights flashing, you might want to turn around. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so, when it's bad, it's bad, right? Yeah, I mean they call it Bodymore Murder Land. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, man, for a reason. So, uh, but you know, but other than that, you know, it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful city. It's a, uh, you know, we're a, a tourist city, you know, we, we are, you know, we have, we're one of the original first 13 colonies, you know what I mean? So I've always wanted to go to, uh, I've been to Boston, but I haven't been there since I've been an adult. So like, I really have would you like been to, to Connecticut. I've been to Connecticut. I used to date a girl that lived in Connecticut. She lived in, uh, well, it's it's right over there, right outside. When you hit Connecticut, like from New York, so what's that area called over there? Uh, um, the Hamptons. <laughs> not, not the Hamptons, though. But yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Greenwich. What is it? There's Greenwich. Not Greenwich, Greenwich Village. Norwalk. 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 Yeah, Norwalk. So I used to go to Norwalk, and because uh, I used to go stay with her and then come back and forth. Because at the time I lived in Delaware too. So yeah, uh, that's so a long ride, man. Yeah, so I jump back and forth. That ain't. I drive so much, man. It's nothing for me to drive. I drive to Atlanta about twice. Like what? Four hours. It's about four hours, right? No, nah, it's probably Three hours. that. Because I, yeah. it's, a, it's a. We're two hundred miles from New York, so to New York City. So and I'm about, I'm about forty five minutes away from New York City. Oh, so yeah, so you're right outside. So you're by the Bronx. Like no, I'm I'm in Connecticut, right over the border. It takes me about. An hour to get to New York from here. That's what I mean, though. When you go into New York from where you are, that's the first parts you hit, like the Bronx area. Well, no, the first I hit Harlem, Harlem. and then yeah, Harlem, and then it goes in. Boom, boom, boom. I usually sure. get off at um at um um Manhattan, and then I just take take the train from there. Yeah, I was just recently in New York City, not even I guess maybe a month ago, if that. And it was the first time I've been in New York City in Manhattan in over 20 some years. And I took my youngest son because I was his first trip to New York. Yeah. And it's the first time I was in Manhattan and I didn't see cabs everywhere. And you can actually drive. I got a park. I parked literally right there on what? 42nd and something to where the, you know, where all the stuff is down right there. The big, all, yeah. the, all, all the lights that. and stuff. Yeah. And Times Square, right? Yeah, Times Square, and I just parked right there like it was nothing. It wasn't hard to find parking. I didn't because of park Uber. Park. Uber changed that. Yeah. No, yeah, I man. was like, no yellow cabs. I, that was the craziest. But just <laughs> yeah. like, I could drive down in Manhattan without being locked in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just moved around. You know what I mean? I yeah. Like, normally, you're like trying to sway traffic. It's yeah. all aggressive driving. It's crazy. Or you can't even move. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can walk faster and you can drive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, we, you know, I, we moved around. It was great. You know what I mean? Then then the weed van pulled up. <laughs> the, the weed you know van? I mean? Yeah, they got a weed van. They're selling edibles and all that stuff right out the van, man. What? Like, it's, Is it, That's got to be illegal. I don't know if it's legal in New York or not. It's legal in Maryland, but uh, I don't know what it is in New York. But they sure enough, and it's got the weed stuff all over the van. You know what I mean? So. I don't you know, I just think they don't, for the places that it's not legal at, I just don't think they care anymore. You know? Yeah, I don't know, but the feds care. I know that. I mean, they do, but they don't really care unless you got lots of it. 
You know, so if you ain't yeah. got, because here's the thing in DC, it's legal because there's superior court law. It's legal in the superior court law of DC, but under the federal level, it's not. But DC is all federal anyway, so it doesn't make any sense. They yeah, so wait, if you get caught with some weed in DC, are you getting federally charged with you're it? You're not going to get caught because it's legal to buy it. Like in Maryland, you got to have a card. Like, the, you know, a medical card. But in D.C., anybody can go to the dispensary and buy it. They got dispensary really? and they got pop-ups right on the corner. Like I don't know how it. legal that is, man. I mean, they're they're doing it. Like, they don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't know if you know this. Um, If you have a marijuana card, you can't get a pistol permit and a marijuana card at the same time. I think I've heard that. Well, I know you can't get on, like, pain management either. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, uh, 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 because I get pain management. So yeah. I remember I came up dirty for some weed, but I really wasn't smoking weed. I'm, I, I smoked this CBD, but the CBDs, because I got inflammation because I got arthritis so bad. But they told me that the CBD I have has the legal limit of THC. So they said, if you smoke it enough, it'll build a THC volume. So <laughs> I took a pee test for my, for my medicine. And they, the lady said, uh, you, you know, you got THC in you. She said, you got a card? I said, a card? I didn't even think about it. And then she was like, I was like, oh, no, I ain't got a card. She said, you might want to get a card because you can't be, have, be coming up, you know. Because then it'll be like your cross uh, using different yeah. substances. Yep. They treat it really like uh, to the T, man. Yeah. But the marijuana, man, like really, like if you have arthritis, because they got, you know, they got it for different for everything. Yeah. So like that, the marijuana, the the CBD, the CBD. Yeah. The, I know what you're talking CBD, about. Look, it's so good right for inflammation, man. It's crazy. Like I'm not gonna lie, man. Right here, bro. That stuff, it works beautiful for uh, arthritis, man. <laughs> but you got the oil. Yeah. Yeah. I take the pills, the oil. I'll smoke it. I got some stuff. Let me see. I just think I got it in here. This one was called Hawaiian Haze. It's CBD. So oh, that's not that's not like weed, though. It's not like real no, weed. No, but it looks like weed, man. It actually looks like weed. So like, you smoke that? It it is it, but it is CBD. <laughs> it's like yeah, they took all the T eight, but they say it's got the legal limit, so it does have so, the legal limit. I mean, so when you smoke that, what's the effects? What do you feel when you smoke well, that? Well, you can actually feel like because I've smoked different CBD. Yeah. This one you can actually feel like you get like a buzz, I guess you would call it. But for me, it's not that I catch a buzz. It really does. Like I have back pain and like the arthritis in my arm because I was shot. And yeah. like, uh, you know, like I smoke that, and then excuse me, it just goes away. It's no longer there. You know. What Yo, I'm we'll get like, into that story next time you come on the show, man. About you getting <laughs> shot and all that. Yeah. And That's you, cool. and then uh, we'll get into that and how, on how, why you went to prison the second time in uh, the feds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's a, yeah, that's a whole nother story. That's for, that's for uh, be, to be continued. <laughs> yeah, man. So is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before we go? I just want to shout out to my team, man, my girl, all my kids. I like to say, uh, you know, Check us out, man, for all the people that are interested in music because it doesn't matter where you're from. We can probably make it work. If you have talent, hit us up, www.1924musicgroup.com. Check out my clothing line, Color Bianca, L-O-G, at the brand Urban Wear, which is the brand clothing store uh, Just check us out, man. Uh, my email is on the websites uh, for the music one, so all you got to do is send me an email. And uh, I'll get back to you. You know what I mean? And I'll listen to your music, check you out. And if we can do something with you, doesn't matter where you're from, man. We can make it work. We make it shake. And if you're a promoter or anything like that, give us a call. I got no problem doing some events with you uh, out of state, wherever. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's just make it work. You know what I mean? I always Definitely. say teamwork, make the dream work. You know what I mean? So, hey, man, if you stuck with if you, if you fucks with me, you stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I that man yeah man so uh thank you i want to thank you for coming on my show man and Appreciate make sure you hit the like subscribe and notification bell so you could get my videos every time they drop and until next time man